The FDA has just approved teblizumab for the delay of clinical type 1 diabetes in people eight years or older who have stage 2 type 1 diabetes. Now, before I talk about teblizumab, I'm going to talk about the stages of type 1 diabetes that we've learned about over the past decade or so. And I think it's important to understand so we can discuss this with our patients. Stage 1 type 1 diabetes basically means that someone has beta cell autoimmunity and normal glucose levels. And beta cell autoimmunity means that someone has two or more islet autoantibodies present. That means anti-insulin antibodies, GAD65, IA2, and or the zinc transporter autoantibodies. And all of these are commercially available, so you can measure these in your patients. And if they have two or more that are positive and normal glucose levels, they are considered stage one. These people are pre-symptomatic. They don't know that they have a risk for type one diabetes unless you measure their autoantibodies. Stage two, type one diabetes is really pre-diabetes in someone who's going to get type one diabetes. So they have evidence of beta cell autoimmunity, but now they have dysglycemia and they're pre-symptomatic. So they basically have an impaired fasting glucose level of greater than or equal to 100. They have abnormal glucose levels on a glucose tolerance test, but unlike with pre-type 2 diabetes, there are glucose levels at intermediate time points of 30, 60, and 90 minutes that can also make the diagnosis and or they have a hemoglobin A1C level of greater than or equal to 5.7%. So these are people where you have the autoantibodies and you see that they have prediabetes. Now, one of the problems with this is that we use the same criteria by and large that has been developed to look at prediabetes in people with type two diabetes and there's still research ongoing to look at the optimal values for predicting the rate of progression to the onset of symptomatic type 1 diabetes in these people. And symptomatic type 1 diabetes is considered stage 3. So in people with stage 3 type 1 diabetes, they now fit the glycemic definition of diabetes and they have the presence of two or more autoantibodies. At stage two, there is a very high risk that someone is going to go on to develop stage three type one diabetes. There is a 60% risk that someone will develop overt type one diabetes in two years and a 75% risk that it will develop over the next four to five years. So, we really want to try to do something with those patients at stage two so they don't go on to develop stage three or clinically significant type one diabetes. Teblizumab works to slow the progression from stage two type one diabetes to stage three or clinically significant type one diabetes. It is the first approved disease modifying agent for type 1 diabetes. It demonstrates a median two-year delay in terms of the progression from stage two to stage three type 1 diabetes. It is an FC receptor non-binding anti-CD3 monoclonal antibody. And the study that they used for approval for teblizumab included 76 participants with stage two type one diabetes. 44 patients were randomized to the teblizumab group and 32 to the placebo group. The drug is given as a daily infusion for 14 consecutive days. And then they followed the patients for a median of 51 months. 
The time to diagnosis of type 1 diabetes was 48.4 months in the tablizumab group and 24.4 months in the placebo group. So the disease was diagnosed in 43% of the participants who received tablizumab versus 72% who received placebo. Looked at another way, the annualized rates of the diagnosis of stage three or clinical type one diabetes were about 15% per year in the tablizumab group and approximately 36% per year in the placebo group. This represents a statistically significant delay in the development of stage three type one diabetes. There were no unexpected side effects, but they did see the expected adverse events of rash, headache, and transient lymphopenia. I know that we would all love a cure for type one diabetes, or at least an ability to completely prevent progression to type one diabetes. But tablizumab really opens the door. It's the start for our doing something to help prevent people or at least slow people in terms of the progression to developing stage three type one diabetes. And I think first steps are first steps. And one of the really important factors here really lies in how much we will be screening people for pre-type 1 diabetes. And I'm going to be very interested to see how the American Diabetes Association changes their guidelines now that we have something to give people to slow progression. And I want to see how this really impacts people, particularly children, because I think that for a young child to develop type 1 diabetes, is really overwhelming and requires a great deal of change in their life. And if that can be slowed, the progression to needing insulin, needing to poke their fingers or use an insulin pump, I think all of that may be very impactful. In adults, it will also be impactful, but I think it's important to evaluate each patient and to determine what their needs are and what's best for that person. But this is the first time ever we've been able to slow the progression of type 1 diabetes through the stages. And I'm really looking forward to using this agent and seeing how my patients actually respond. Mm -hmm.